Hello and welcome back. I'm going to start the video off with this shot here because this isn't going to be in the shot the whole time. And this is not another uh, YZX Studio power monitor review. This is more directed towards what's plugged in here. This is a variable constant load source. And look at the accuracy on that thing. That is just stunning. So let's go ahead and get out of here. All right, well, welcome back. On initial turn on, was it turned all the way down? That's about it's bottomed out here. And I realize that this isn't as accurate as my HP 34401A being a six and a half digit meter. So the burden voltage is gonna be a little different and the the accuracy on the lower end is is uh, not as good. Um, if I wanted to get this more accurate, I'd have to actually plug the fluke into about the 400 milliamp fuse side of things. So we're just going to stick with this slightly inaccuracy here until we increase the load to show what the range and capability of this dummy load is able to do. And you can turn it really slow and actually dial it in right where you need it to simulate whatever kind of load you're looking for which is really great let's go to about a half an amp and if you're not too picky that, that's pretty much dead on for a half an amp and of course we can actually take it higher. So we'll go up to one amp. One and a half. Just keep turning it clockwise. We'll keep increasing it. See if I can settle it out on two amps there. Well, close, slightly overdrawn, it, but not bad at all. So there's the two amp load. And then it finally tops out at about two and a half amps. And that would be our top, top load, top range. Now to give you an idea on how quiet this is, it does take I, I'd say anywhere between two and four minutes to warm up. I'd give it at least three minutes minimum to warm up before the load starts to become uh, stable. But that's really not bad at all. So let's go ahead and take the fluke out of the picture here. So we can go back down to a quieter environment. Okay, now that we had the fluke out of the picture, we're going to go ahead and use this battery, which I believe is capable of an output up to 3 amps. So it should be able to handle everything we need and will be much more quieter in operation. And the first thing that surprised me about this was how quiet this fan was. It is just amazingly quiet. I could bring my microphone all the way down to it and you wouldn't hear it. And you could just see how amazingly quiet that is. That is just it, it's impressive to me on how quiet that is, honestly. So again, the fan noise will pick up. It's kind of backwards, actually. Because it's drawing less current, it actually adds to the, uh, the flow of the voltage, and the fan actually speeds up on a lower current. But... As you turn the load up, the fan will slow it down. But don't worry about that because it's actually still got plenty of air flowing through here. It stays cool to the touch. The, the heat sink gets a little warm, but it really does stay really cool to the touch. It's an impressive little, uh, little dummy load. Um, much better than what I was using before. You guys may have seen me use something like this in the past. It's more of a coil wire resistor. 
And the odd thing about this is you need to actually wait for these to warm up all the way and these will get scolding hot. It'll actually burn your fingers when you touch them. Compared to this is just the opposite. It'll actually start off a little higher as it warms up. It drops down a little bit in the amperage, but nowhere near scalding hot, like I said, just barely warm. In fact, the regulator on the back of it, this is what the whole entire heatsink is for right here. And this is an impressive regulator. I think it, it's max capabilities when I looked at the spec sheet on this was um, up to 55 volts and 110 amps. Uh, it was just really impressive but even that if I touch that right now it's still warm it's not gonna burn me because the way they designed this whole entire thing this whole board becomes a transfer point for the heat to transfer to the fan on the other side which the fan seems to be glued to the actual PCB board and then they put a little thermal paste on here and actually screwed the regulator into the actual heatsink of the fan you'll see the screw actually come out on the other side and it will tell you it's uh, capable of running 3.5 volts to 14 volts and 0 to 2.5 amps it's uh, almost zero you saw the bottom out on this at the beginning of the video there's a solder point here on number three. Let me see if I can zoom into that. So if you were to cross this junction or solder this junction off on number three, it'll be able to go up to three amps. I haven't tried this yet. I have no need to draw three amp DC current. It's got a multicolor LED right here, which is an indicator for different program modes. And then you have your plus and your minus buttons. So these are actual buttons here. And they were smart enough to make the buttons out of metal and use the full, you know, full metal press and everything. Because this way, knowing that it does get hot, especially hotter on this side. The model number is ZL1000, made by YZX Studio. And the program buttons are actually for different modes, particularly in regards to the Qualcomm Quick Charge for the QC 2.0, QC 3.0, the MTKPE, and the MTKPE Plus chargers. Of course, I don't have anything that actually runs these particular chargers, but there is multiple different lights as far as the color of lights that indicate what mode you're in really nice dummy load as you can hear it's really quiet um, it would definitely come in handy for putting a load on things to test certain boards or circuits that I'm building that I incorporate USB in and I'm thinking even if I don't incorporate USB into it I can still use it if I wire something up as uh, well this actually this is just a, a, a wired up positive and negative there's nothing special here it just runs straight to my power supply uh, with a couple of uh, male bananas on the other side. But I'm sure I could take those uh, that USB plug to the uh, banana jacks and then maybe put a set of jumpers on it and jump the power to whatever board I'm working on and uh, use this for simulating a load while capturing the data on my HP and on the uh, oscilloscope and then actually try to find any anomalies while actually being under load so that would be this will definitely come in handy there's no doubt about that and I love the fact that it runs so quiet I love the fact that it runs cool um, I would never walk away running this one it's too much of a fire hazard there's no way I would walk away uh, this item was provided to me by Frankie Tong from uh, 99 cent hobbies or frankie.com so it's 99 cent hobbies.com or frankie.com I did have the little tag out here but it blew away earlier there we go we'll put that back here so it was provided to me for testing purposes and evaluation and do a quick review on it so big shout out to Frankie thank you for providing this it is a pleasure to deal with this I do like this this was one of the things on my uh, agenda to build was a constant current load as long as and, and you know along with a uh, more stable voltage reference 
this definitely does it. In fact, I would actually, after monitoring it over the uh, six and a half digit multimeter, it really does stay quite stable once it's warmed up. This is a really, really stable dummy load. It's a really nice item. I do like it. It's a little bit sensitive when you're trying to adjust this. Now one of the things I did to make this a little easier, basically I put a screwdriver bit that was about the same thickness and diameter of this uh, slot here. And I attached a pair of hemostats to it. So this actually gave me a wider turning radius, which in doing so, I was able to actually turn the dial slower. Although it still jumped. It's just really that sensitive sometimes. Whoops, whoa, way too fast. So this was one of my tricks. I thought about doing a 3D print maybe to make a bigger dial for it. And that may actually work too. There we go. So I may end up changing the potentiometer on this to one that has more turns, so that way I will be able to adjust it easier. Boy, I can't get that thing to go to two, can I? There, we got it. And then of course I noticed sometimes when you pull this up, it would change again. But I've learned to pick it up straight up like that. So that did help a little bit. It is a great little tool. It will definitely come in handy. It runs cool. It's not a fire hazard like this. I would have no problem leaving this plugged in for eight hours and being monitored and logged and testing. I think I will change the potentiometer on it to maybe a 10K multi-turn and see how that works. You may have noticed during this video that the audio has come across a lot more clear and this was not a cheap investment by far. I have invested into setting up a, uh, an actual studio condenser microphone. So thanks for watching. And of course, if, as always, if you like the video, please subscribe. I am trying to actually get a subscriber base going here. Your subscriptions are welcomed.